Okay, we've all been there. Wrestling and frantically shoving our clothes into a suitcase. Hoping that nothing gets crushed or forgotten. But fear not, the stress of packing a suitcase will now be gone. We have discovered the ultimate secret to packing an efficient suitcase. We've been traveling the world for the last year and have visited over 15 countries with just one carry-on suitcase. And we've learned a few things about what it takes to pack a suitcase along the way. In this video, we're about to unveil the game-changing techniques that will revolutionize the way you pack. We're not just talking about neat arrangements. We're talking about the art of strategic packing that will save you space. Minimize wrinkles, and leave room for those souvenirs without incurring those pesky, overweight baggage fees. From selecting the right luggage to mastering folding, rolling, and organizing, you will learn to maximize every square inch of your suitcase, all while maintaining fresh and wrinkle-free outfits. There'll be no more searching through piles of clothes to find that one elusive sock. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video as I share one tip that will potentially save you loads of money. So, whether you are embarking on a weekend getaway or a grand adventure around the world, get ready to level up your packing game. Say goodbye to the suitcase chaos and join us on our journey to become the ultimate packing expert. Okay, let's start by talking about luggage. What do I bring? I've been using this piece of luggage for like the last two years and I've loved it. This is from a company called Away. It is a, as you can see, a hard shell suitcase. And this is about the biggest carry-on size that you can get away with. Again, has worked great for me, super dur durable. Some people prefer the soft shell over the hard shell. For me, I feel like personally, in my experience, that the hard covers, the hard shell, holds up a lot better to the wear and tear of travel compared to the soft shell. Because usually with a soft shell, you have more zippers, you have more potential for things that get caught and broken. Whereas this one just has the one zipper, has a nice, that nice hard coating to hold up to getting thrown and tossed around. Some of the features I really like on this bag, it has dual handles, so it has one on the top, one on the side, which I like is very convenient when you're carrying it through the airport or trying to get it in an overhead bin. It's got four wheels on the bottom, nice durable wheels, rolls super smooth, and it's got that TSA approved lock on the top here, which is good for peace of mind. Let's take a look at the inside. Now, when you're looking at the bag here from the top down, you have two sides here. One with kind of this zipper side with a mesh pocket. You have this other side here with these compression uh, straps and kind of this like divider, which I'll explain more about these two sides later when we start packing the bag because um, they come in handy zipper here but other than that it's a relatively simple bag there's not a lot to it but that can be really nice to not have a ton going on just keep it simple the first important step of packing who am i kidding they're all important so just listen to everything <laughs> how i always start packing is i first start by laying everything out that's super important for a couple of reasons the first one being is if you initially just start putting stuff into your suitcase, it's very easy to lose track or remember what you packed. Two, that is the easiest way to overpack. When you lay everything out, it's super easy to see what you have, what you don't have, what you have too much of, what you don't have enough of. And I call this here my first draft. And as we know, the first draft is never good, and the same goes with packing. Your first draft is never your best draft. So I call this my first draft, and after this, what I start doing is I start analyzing what I have, because in reality, I most likely don't need all this stuff. It's human nature to overpack. It's really hard to prevent it, so you have to provide yourself with opportunities to cut things back. 
And by laying everything out, that's one way you can do that. So for my first draft, I take a look at everything I have. I start counting. Okay, how many t-shirts do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six t-shirts. I take inventory of everything. Then I start asking myself, what am I doing on my trip and how long am I going to be gone? Those two questions help me answer what I need to make sure I'm not overpacking. For example, I have two sweatshirts laid out right now. There's no way I possibly need two sweatshirts. So, boom, throw it out. All right, I have six t-shirts. I'm usually good with five, even if I'm going for longer than a week. So, take one t-shirt, throw it out. For example, I have two pairs of pants. Do I really need two pairs of pants? Maybe if it's like a formal outing or I'm going to a wedding or something like that, but I don't go to that many, that many of those events. Usually I'm like hiking or something like that, so I'm gonna throw one out. Again, this is a great way to get to your final draft so that way you're not overpacking. Now, another great tip when you're initially analyzing what stuff you're gonna pack in your suitcase is remember, you're gonna need to wear something to the airport. And what I would recommend is wearing your most bulky items. Now, I know for some people this is actually hard because usually your most bulky items may not be your most comfortable or even more so for people, not the most uh, fashionable. But I can't tell you how many times I've looked a little goofy in the airport because I'm wearing my most bulky items, but it makes packing and moving around just a lot less stressful and easier. So if you are packing things like hiking boots, and sweatshirts, I would highly recommend wearing those items versus packing them in your suitcase. Okay, one last thing before we finalize what we're putting in our suitcase. And I would label this a little travel packing pro tip. Always pack an extra outfit with you in your personal item. This is very, very important and has come in handy for me and Meg on multiple occasions. Now, Though we are packing a carry-on, there is still a chance that you're going to be separated from that luggage. A lot of times overhead bin space gets full or for some reason your bag's a little too heavy, they might require you to check your bag. And as we know, when you get separated from your luggage, there's always the chances of your luggage getting lost, which is no fun. So do yourself a favor and pack an extra pair of socks, a pair of shorts, something that's gonna get you by if you were to lose your luggage. The other kind of positive of doing that is it now kind of cuts down your space or it cuts down your stuff even more so that way you have more space in your suitcase and it's a little less stressful to travel. Now we're gonna get packing. So, oh by the way, I was gonna mention this. If you're at all curious about more specifically what I'm packing and why I'm packing it, I made another video about how I travel with just one bag or one personal item. And in that video, I talk a lot about the specifics of what kind of t-shirts I bring, why I'm bringing them, and things like that. So if you're at all interested in more specifically what products I bring on my travels, feel free to give that video a watch because I go into a lot of detail there. But anyway, packing cubes. Packing cubes, packing cubes, packing cubes. Now. Some people are strongly for packing cubes. Some people are strongly against packing cubes. I am, as you can see, I have my packing cubes. I am strongly for packing cubes. In my opinion, I, I don't see the negative of them, to be honest with you. They just keep everything organized. You know, um, you know exactly where everything is. It kind of compresses things down. In my opinion, it's a positive. So I'm not sure why you won't use packing cubes, but if you have a really great reason to, leave it down in the comments. I'd be curious to hear the reasons why you don't or don't like packing cubes because I love them. There are quite a few different methods when it comes to actually folding your clothes and putting it in the packing cubes. I live by the roll method. In my opinion, it decreases the amount of wrinkling. It also saves a little bit of space. I'm not sure how much space, but it for sure decreases wrinkles. So what I'll do is I'll start by grabbing a t-shirt. I usually try to put like all my tops in like one packing cube and separate like that bottoms in one just to keep things organized. But I'll start by folding the t-shirt just like so. 
I'll tuck the sleeves in, give it a roll. The reason this decreases wrinkles is because you don't have any like hard seams. As you can see like in this folded t-shirt, right, you have this hard crease. The idea with a rolled t-shirt is you'll get, you don't get any of those hard creases. So I'll just start by kind of lining up my packing cube like so, by just doing one at a time. I got my t-shirts in my packing cube. It seems to be a pretty full packing cube, but I'm gonna show you a little tip to increase your space within your packing cube. So what I'll do is I have my t-shirts in, I'll start by zipping basically kind of like two of the sides so that, that I have an opening in the top here. And once I have this opening, I can kind of push everything down and I feel like I just gained about 50% more of the packing cube. From here with my t-shirts, I can then start to throw in my socks. I got seven pairs of socks, by the way, if you're curious. Throw on my socks. And then I'll do the same thing with my underwear. Underwear, just roll, same thing. Throw them right in the top here. And boom, I got every single shirt, piece of underwear, and pair of socks all in this one packing cube. Now that I have everything in the packing cubes, it's time to start putting it in the suitcase. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, there's two sides to the suitcase. We have this side that has kind of this like divider with these buckles which are known as compression straps and then you have this side which has that mesh zipper i always put all of my things that compress on the side with the compression straps what that includes are basically all clothes being that they can compress down we can utilize the benefit of these straps to help keep things a little bit tighter so i'll start by just putting my packing cubes in, boom, just like so. From there, there are a couple things that I don't put in the packing cubes. I don't put my sweatshirt in the packing cube, as well as if I have, any, for example, a nice shirt, like a button-up, I will lay that on top as well. So I will fold that on top. From here, I can close it down. Like I said, what's really nice about this is it has these compression straps that allow me to, oh, that was user error, not bag error. Anyway, I have these compression straps that can help cinch things down. Boom, that's one side of my suitcase. Now, for the other side of my suitcase, I put things that aren't as compressible. Things like shoes, jackets, just things that are a little bit more clunky, I put in the other side. And for me, what that looks like is I actually also carry another backpack. Now, most people probably wouldn't carry something like this, but I carry a dry pack. This is a 31 liter dry pack from Sea line It's kind of silly, but I use it so much for the travel that I do. So this thing is kind of clunky, but it does kind of fold up somewhat decently in the bottom of this suitcase. I kind of fold it up like this and then just kind of place it in here. Again, it's not perfect, but it works for this side of the suitcase. I'll also place a pair of shoes. And then for me, I'll round it off with rain jacket, kind of put that at the top there. And my Patagonia puffy jacket, boom, like so. And then last but not least, I'll put in my toiletry bag because again, this doesn't compress super well. So I like to put it in this pocket. Zips up, all held within this mesh zipper. We're good to go. Now, last but not least, I'll put like accessories like belts in this zipper pocket here, which by the way, I do want to show you this belt because this is a sweet belt. This is a belt from a company called Arcade. It's super, super stretchy 
But what I like about it most it ha is it has this plastic clasp, which is really nice because most of the time when I'm going through TSA, they don't make me take it off. I say most of the time. There has been a couple times they've made me take it off, but this is one of the biggest mistakes people make when going through TSA is wearing things like belts. But this one's great for travel because of its comfortability as well as this plastic buckle. Which normally I would say it would feel kind of cheap, but this one's been great for me. Another thing to keep in mind when packing is TSA guidelines for size and weight. Or I should say airline guidelines. In the US, you'll find that most of the time it's just a size restriction. So pay close attention to that. But when you're flying internationally, oftentimes it's a weight restriction. And that can be very, very important being that the weight limit is a lot less than you would think. Recently, in our experience, while we were flying over in Asia, the weight limit was 14 kilos, which is actually not that much. So it's even more motivation to not overpack and be very intentional with what you're putting in your suitcase. Remember, it's not about how much we can pack, it's about how much we can get done with the least amount possible. That's gonna leave you feeling much less stressed on your travels. Traveling is not easy. It takes a lot of practice, patience, and knowledge to become a good traveler. But the very fact that you're watching this video, you're on the right path. If you wanna continue on this path to become an expert traveler, I'll consider watching my video about the unwritten rules of air travel. It'll give you some tips and tricks to make your air travel experience much better. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. We will see you in the next one.